Okay, so everybody, welcome to another episode of the Bootcast. I'm your host, Eugene Devro, and joining me today um, is Effia Sulter. Yes. <laughs> Very good. Effia, welcome to, the, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. <laughs> no problem at all. So tell us a bit about yourself, where you're, where you're from, what you're doing. and. Um, so I'm originally from Scotland, grew up in Scotland, but at the moment I'm living overseas in Melbourne um, and I write a travel blog over at Effie Talks Life, which is mainly about solo travel, but then also things about mental health as well. Mm. And basically it's kind of my mission to empower women both to travel the world alone, but mm. to make everyday life an adventure. And especially for me, obviously you can't see me, but as a black woman, um, it's especially important for me to empower young black women to travel mm. as I found when I was kind of doing my travel research that I couldn't see a lot of people that looked like me and kind right. of subconsciously when you don't see people that look like you, mm. you wonder, well, is this space for me? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Very good. Very interesting um, take on travel. You're in, where are you right now then? Are you in Scotland or? No, no, I'm in Melbourne, Australia. Ah, nice, nice, nice. So have you been there a while or is this a... Yeah, um, so I, I initially came out for one year in 2016. Obviously now it's 2020, so a lot of time has passed. Um, but I've done kind of some trips in between and then just kind of always ended up going back to Melbourne. Very good. Your accent is, is, I was trying to make out, what, what, what kind of accent is that? <laughs> you no, know, honestly, people are like, are you American? Um, yeah, I grew up in Scotland. I just, I don't know. I just seem to pick up other people's accents and now have a really neutral accent that sounds like nothing. <laughs> it's interesting. Um, yeah, so wh- why did you start traveling in, in the first place? Was there, was there like a turning point or did you kind of? Crack, crack up one day or anything like that. <laughs> crack up one day. What well, kind of? Um, so there's a couple of reasons, really. I had in my like maybe my last year of uni, I planned in my summer holidays to go on this like Euro trip with a friend from uni. And then like a couple of months before, she's like, actually, I'm not going to have the money to go. And I was like, right, well, that's it. it. Then the trip just isn't happening. And then I ended up going back to uni to study for my master's. Yeah. And while studying for my master's, it's probably like one of the most stressful years of my life. I spent the entire time just like hating the degree, hating turning up there. And I was like, when I finish, I cannot go straight into a job. I just can't. Um, (laughs) I just couldn't. And I had another friend who sort of had similar feelings. So we're both like, yes, this is the plan. Why don't we just go to Australia for a year? Um, And that was what kind of sparked everything. (laughs) And then a couple of months, again, a couple of months before we were due to go, in fact, I think it was even less time this time. I think it was like uh, maybe a month before we were due to go. My friend pulled out. And we'd already kind of booked tickets by this point. I'd given up my flat. I'd booked in a leaving party. So <laughs> I was like, well, maybe this time I'm actually going to have to go. Cool. And yeah, one year ended up turning into nearly four. <laughs> That's what I like to hear. That's brilliant. So why solo travel specifically then? Um, you know what? It was never, solo travel was something I never set my sights on. It was something I would have never wanted to do had my friend not pulled out. But then having done it and realized that it wasn't as scary as I thought and all the benefits that came with it, in one aspect, it's the freedom and the challenges that push you to step outside of your boundaries. Because Mm. I don't really believe in spending your life waiting on other people, because if you do that, then you're just going to have spent your whole life waiting and not really achieved that much so in one aspect it's definitely about the freedom but for me personally another aspect of it is having control over my own life so growing up I definitely um, dealt with a lot of adversity I was orphaned at 14 I dealt with depression anxiety chronic illness and having like you know despite all those things being able to get out in the world and enjoy it um, and not just despite these things, but, you know, because of these things, because these things that have happened have made me who I am. So, yeah, in some ways it's about freedom, but in other ways it's about kind of having control of your own destiny, I think. And that's kind of like what I want other people to get from it, too. Well, well, well done. Um, 
so you, you were orphaned at 14. Do, do you want to talk about yeah. that or? Yeah, sure. So yeah, <laughs> so actually my family history is such a long, complicated story, but my sister and I were adopted at three. Um, and yeah. then unfortunately my mum in my teenage years, she suffered from breast cancer um, and really battled with that for a few years and then ended up passing away when um, I was 14. Yeah. God, sorry to hear that. That's, geez, that's terrible. Yeah, so I do think, well, these things, you know, they either make or break you or they break you and then mm. make you. So mm. although it was like challenging and difficult and, you know, it is still it is hard sometimes, there has been a lot of good that has come from it. And I've managed to make something of a kind of bad situation, I guess. Very good. And do you still talk to your sister? And Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I have, um, I have a little brother as well. So oh. my brother there like we have we have a family whatsapp but to be honest we don't talk, we don't talk in there that much but yeah i do talk to them both separately yeah, yeah. yeah. very good we're good friends all good friends <laughs> that's brilliant um so like some people would consider solo travel or maybe solo travel as a female as a girl to be dangerous or more dangerous maybe than men traveling on their own what yeah. do you think of that yeah, well, in a way, it kind of irritates me because when I see people being like, oh, you shouldn't let your daughter travel solo or like, why do women keep traveling alone when they know bad things are going to happen to them? And honestly, life is dangerous. Like mm -hmm. life in general is dangerous. Crossing the road is dangerous. Leaving your house is dangerous. But again, like if you didn't do these things and you would just do nothing with your life. So I don't yeah. think that solo travel if you're careful and if you take the right precautions is any more dangerous than living life day to day yeah. um but yeah i think it's it is a, like a really strong misconception that it's dangerous for women i think it's just about like having common sense having awareness obviously mm -hmm. not telling the whole world hey like i'm out here completely alone you know it's yeah, just about yeah, yeah. very good um just on that, which which country that you've been to have, have you found to be kind of the safest? Which felt like you could mm. just walk around? No oh, absolutely. Like. Japan and South Korea. South so Korea. I went to Japan. I went to Japan in 2018. And again, it was a solo trip. I spent quite a lot of time by myself in Japan. And I went out for a few drinks by myself. And I was cycling back and then stopped into the 7-Eleven. Yeah. Um, and then when I, this is like three in the morning <laughs> and when I stopped into 7-Eleven, I went to pay for my, I think it was like Smirnoff ice, ice, but grape style. I was loving these and I went to pay for it and I realized I'd left my purse in the bike and I go back outside and the purse is just sitting there in the bike. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I feel like, you know, in Scotland, that purse yeah. would have been gone like the yeah, second. Yeah. Same, in, same in Ireland and probably a lot of yeah. times in Western countries. That's mad. So, um, yeah. Cool. So... How many countries have you been to so far in, in your life? Uh, I know it's over 20, but I'm not sure on the exact number. Yeah, yeah. Also, I was having this debate with my flatmate the other day. <laughs> so when I was on a trip to Vietnam a couple of years ago, yeah. we stepped foot into China, but we didn't go across any official border crossing. Did oh. I go to China? Ah. You know? yeah, Whoa, so there's, right. so there's actually a part where you can just... Well, I was, yeah, I was, so yeah. when you we were um, in Vietnam, we like motorcycled up north and we got yeah, to yeah. like this northern part of Vietnam and then there's this kind of like cement block with some Chinese characters, I don't know what they said. Um, and our guy was like, that's it, we're in China now. Jeez. Don't go too far, we'll get shot. I was like, perfect. <laughs> cool. Maybe that's what the sign said. <laughs> yeah. um, and in Vietnam, where, whereabouts did you go to in Vietnam? Um, so when I first started traveling in 2016, I went to Vietnam and I think I just did Hanoi, yeah. Hoi An and Ho Chi Minh. And I spent 10 days there because you can only get kind of um, the visa on arrival for Vietnam is maybe two weeks. Mm. Um, and I thought that would be enough time and it really wasn't. So yeah. I ended up going back a year later. And in the second year, I went kind of up north to Ha Giang and Ha Long Bay. And that was so uh, beautiful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I spent uh, three months in, in Ho Chi Minh, Saigon. Oh, amazing. Uh, yeah, what amazing. I, I was working as an English teacher there. Um, so I did a small bit of travel kind of on the outskirts of the city. And I went to like, you know, the Coochie Tunnels. Oh, yeah, I went there, yeah. Um, and some, some of the kind of, I suppose, the touristy place, like the War Museum and the National 
uh, or the House of Independence and some of the kind of landmarks around the city. Yeah. Um, did a motorbike tour, a kind of a dirt bike tour as well. That was oh, one of the highlights amazing. as well. Yeah, that was really cool because we drove through all the kind of uh, the fields and all of the lands outside of the city where yeah. pe- people were kind of farming and stuff. It was really... Yeah, that's the stuff that's so interesting. Yeah, it? yeah, it was amazing. Like, just now, pass- it's like a juxtaposition of like the, the old and the new. Yeah, yeah. Um, but when I go back now, I, I hope to go up north, like you said, up to yeah. Sapa and Halong Bay and Hoi An and Hanoi. And there's lo- there's so many places to, to kind of take off the, the Yeah, list. for sure. And the food. The food. <laughs> yeah, oh. Oh, the food is unbelievable. <laughs> like, I was, like, I lost loads of weight from, from being really? in Asia. Um, just, just from eating more healthily, you know. Um, the veg dishes and soups and stuff and fish and... Yeah. Just wasn't You're eating like, wow, the this same. Is what flavor is. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Good. Um, so, what, what, what was the longest time then that you spent in, in a foreign country? Did you say a couple of years there at one point? Yeah. So, I would say Australia. Like, there has been. I've kind of like dipped in and out, but in total, it's been like maybe three years. I've spent here three years. Yeah. Cool. Three years. It's a long. I it's know. a long time. <laughs> It's a it's a good it's a good length of time to kind of get to know a place really, isn't it? Yeah, for sure. Do you know, because yeah. sometimes we can go to places for a couple of weeks and we only maybe get it. yeah, we only scratch the surface or have a kind of a, a tourist or a semi tourist uh, perspective on life there. Yeah, that's true. That's very true. Yeah, so what what do you like or I suppose not like about life in a foreign country? Um, wow, obviously as we touched on the food, like I really love going to a country and trying all the different foods. Um something that I can find challenging, like I'm getting better at it. But I've always been someone who is absolutely terrible with directions, always shocking with directions. So for me, navigating a public transport system in another country is challenging <laughs> and when I went to Japan as well they didn't really speak a lot of English and like the train station so it would get quite frustrating when I'm like I'm trying to go here but I don't know where I am I'm trying to read the map which is English I know but I still can't read the map <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> help me and they're just like Ugh. so yeah that is a frustration for me but I am kind of just like I kind of resigned to the fact that I know I'm going to be lost and just enjoy it whereas yeah, before yeah. I'm like freaking out and I'm just like cool yeah, where are we yeah. going to go don't know yeah that's i think that's one of the kind of luxuries and benefits of like when you're when you're traveling as opposed to when you're going on a holiday because for a holiday you might have a set time and maybe a strict or kind of a semi-strict itinerary of where you need to be and oh you need to get the bus at this time from your hotel blah, blah, absolutely blah. um what would be the single biggest thing you've learned about about yourself i suppose from from travel I think it's definitely been actually like finding joy in spending time alone. And mm. I came to this realization, you know, everyone was like, oh, I go to Bali and I found myself. But actually I went to Bali and I discovered something about myself a few months ago. Um, and I was doing some writing for my blog and a lot of people will message me and ask like how to make friends in a foreign country. Mm. And I'll put a lot of emphasis on that. But I realized that what I had really never spoken about on my blog was actually just spending time alone and not like going on a solo trip to be like oh like who am I going to meet obviously meeting Mm. people is a huge part of that but doing things by yourself and enjoying you know cycling around Japan drunk at three in the morning or going out to eat for dinner by yourself and having like an eight course meal and people looking at you like where are my (laughs) friends and you're like no I don't care I'm here alone (laughs) you know and enjoying it and really leaning into it and that's something that I've learned from solo travel and even when I'm not traveling like I'll go to the cinema by myself. I'll go for lunch by myself. I actually prefer to go to the cinema alone. I'm like, why go, why go with a friend yeah, and yeah. try to distract you? Like, I'm focused. I'm here to watch the film. <laughs> you know, when you I go actually, alone, what happens yeah, yeah. you? I, all that. I used to love doing that in Vietnam, just yeah. going to the cinema because the cinemas Honestly. are amazing in, in Ojibwe. Oh, good. I yeah. think it helps with like, <laughs> kind of homesickness as well like when you go to a, see a film in a foreign country and it's in English you're like oh okay this yeah. is good yeah, yeah. Relax. yeah. maybe even spread a silent tear you know it's yeah it's interesting um where where are you from originally or what what are your origins yeah no oh so, <laughs> so my parents are Nigerian yeah oh Nigerian yeah very good yeah. cool um and have you ever like experienced any 
any racism while you were traveling and um yes but it's not in the sense that maybe people would typically think like there's not been out and out like shouting or harassment it's more like Mm. looks or people like coming up like (laughs) it's funny because a lot of people go to asia even my white friends they'll be like oh like people Mm. tried to take photos of me and but when you're black it's a different experience because when people try to take photo of you and you're like a white person it's normally because they have like they're putting you on the pedestal and they have this like majestic view of you whereas often when you're a black person people are asking to take photos sometimes it is out of curiosity but other times you know it's like "Mm, like is this like funny to them you know people are like kind of like laughing and pointing at you Mm -hmm. so that can be quite uncomfortable and I guess you you have the choice of whether you want to let someone take a photo Mm -hmm. or how you let it affect you and I think as well um (laughs) Australia despite the fact that I've been here for so long this is somewhere where I have noticed a lot of racism Mm -hmm. and again not in the out and out racism but in like kind of subtle microaggressions that kind of get to you. So obviously I I am from Scotland, but people yeah. typically will think that I'm lying. And I'm like, well, why would I lie about it? And I'll tell them, <laughs> and they're like, no, yeah. no, you're not. I've been to Scotland. You're not from Scotland. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. like, what specifically about me is it that makes you think I'm not from Scotland? And I'll kind of like, you know, get yeah, into yeah, a yeah. point where they're like, it's because you're black and it doesn't make sense, you know? Yeah, yeah. So, yeah funny how people kind of build up a stereotype in in their head like and like the UK is so diverse with with all multinationals like um or multinationalities yeah Um, it's interesting so Australia Hmm. yeah I think the other thing as well what surprises me is when people say to me oh like I didn't know black people could come from Scotland I'm like okay there's how many billion people in this world (laughs) And you think that's just one, a, just one, one single one. It just doesn't stop. make sense. Interesting. Interesting. <laughs> yeah. It's it's amazing how um small minded people people can be. And I, I, I suppose that's that's one of the this is why I, I tell people and promote travel, like that it just broadens your mind and yeah. totally yeah. opens yourself up to to new possibilities and new perspectives on on the world, you know. For sure, yeah. I've learned a lot about the world and myself. <laughs> yeah, so I see on your Instagram that you, your kind of main job is working with Pinterest or for Pinterest. Um, yeah, um, yeah, with with Pinterest. With, I mean, with Pinterest. <laughs> yeah. Um, so as a blogger, I you know I hang out in a lot of Facebook groups, and I actually kind of stopped writing while I was traveling. Um, kind of in 2016 and then as I was kind of getting back into it in maybe 2018 I noticed a lot of people talking about Pinterest as a tool to market their blogs and I was like wow this is very interesting and I also realized that a lot of people really didn't know how to use it properly and I started this um, kind of private Facebook group for people who wanted to um, get their blogs out there And in kind of teaching people on that platform Mm. how to use it, I realized it was something that I personally wanted to take further and not just teach bloggers how to use it, but particularly like coaches and creatives. And yeah, I just love help (laughs) watching people's platforms grow and kind of helping them um, grow their platforms that way. It's actually maybe my, yeah, I think it's my favorite social media platform because, you know, people go to Pinterest and they want to buy, they want to be inspired. You go on Instagram and it's just to waste three hours of your life. But when you go to Pinterest, you're like, I have an idea. How can I bring it to life? And I think it's really exciting in that way. It's interesting because I, I set up a Pinterest uh, profile when I started the my blog. My, my story is kind of my blog started and then the podcast came second. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. Personally, I I don't really like the writing side of it. I I prefer yeah. more the interview and the preparation, the pre-production, yeah. editing, and putting it out there. But yeah. um, I just found it yeah I found it difficult to f- on Pinterest. Like, what what do I actually do on it? Like, really? Oh, oh, you're talking <laughs> so, to the right. Top person. top tip. <laughs> um, I I reckon there's two. I reckon there's two. One is search engine optimization. So it's about figuring out like your ideal like reader customer listener Mm. what is their kind of search intent when they go on pinterest what are they looking for and then how can you incorporate those words into your description your profile their name 
And then, of course, the other side of it is the aesthetics. You know, if you mm. have ugly pins, no one's going to click on them. But saying that, <laughs> one of the other things about Pinterest is you could post something on there today and it not take off for a year. And I've yeah. noticed this year, like a couple of my uh, ugly pins from back in the early days are kind of like, picking up. I'm like, why? Yeah. Can't we just close in the shadows, please? Yeah. Um, so yeah, never, never delete anything on Pinterest, even if it is really ugly, because it could like pick up like yeah. months, a year down the line. So yeah. Interesting. And are are you on um, TikTok? Yeah, you know what? I have. Um, it's all. It's like on my list. I'm like, oh, so many platforms. It is on my list of things to like, kind of get into this year. Yeah. Um, but I need to. You know what? It's kind of difficult to put yourself in the mindset of like just making things to be like funny and entertaining when you're so used to like, okay, I, how can I provide the most value? Yeah. Whereas here, it's like yeah. value is very like, short space, like, short time frame, isn't it? Seconds. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I need to head around that. It's a different way of thinking, isn't it? Yeah, I, I'm kind of the same because I was kind of tying with the idea of going on it as well. But like, again, like, kind of like Pinterest, I, I don't really know what to do on it yet or like, yeah, should, yeah. should I be on it? And Because I think it's definitely a, a younger demographic. Yeah. Like maybe, I think it's, I was looking at some statistic last week. Uh, it was something like 16 to 24 year olds is the, yeah. is the main demographic. Yeah. And then, ironically then the 60 or 65 year olds are on really? it well. that's interesting probably because they have like grandparents of chilling at home, yeah, yeah. like reminiscing about the good days <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah it's weird um interesting yeah i definitely think it is worth being on though like a lot of my friends who now use it are just kind of repurposing existing videos yeah. that they have so they that's, don't need to make brand new content I'm yeah like, that's Ooh. that's another way to, to to do it i suppose just kind of stretching one piece of content yeah. across different platforms. Yeah. Um cool. So what what kind of career or work skills do you think that you've gained or improved as a result of traveling? Um I think definitely being self-reliant. Yeah. Um cuz yeah, I think traveling alone for the first time is like really when you're like you have no one else to rely on but yourself. And with, you know, working for yourself, it's the same situation. You have to like motivate yourself to do things like with solo traveling, you have to motivate yourself to get out of bed. Otherwise you're not going to see anything. Yes. You could stay in bed and watch Netflix, but you know, you're only here once. And with yeah, yeah. business, I guess it's kind of similar. Yes. I could stay in bed and watch Netflix, but do I want to build something? Mm. So I suppose motivation as a as a skill of is that what you mean yeah 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 i think um the motivation i've definitely learned and also kind of like leaning into your passion because i'm sure you know like as a blogger and podcaster that you just have to really like put so much of yourself into it before you ever see any return yeah. and you have to be like so comfortable with doing that and you know just keep going like relentlessly even though at first it may seem like wow like nothing's happening yeah yeah interesting and have you have you witnessed or like have you experienced any kind of negativity towards what you're doing because you know the traditional path is kind of mm -hmm. work work nine to five in a safe secure job and get your two weeks holidays a year mm -hmm. and when you go out and venture on your own and try and start something like all on your own from your passion and your interests people can be well maybe this is just a, an irish thing but people can be quick to to judge and to to skate or yeah. put, put you down or doubt you like have yeah you, you um, that or how do you how do you deal with yeah. that yeah for sure um it's, it's it's funny because actually like someone that i was like quite close to who i felt was kind of supporting my vision it ended up it kind of ended up not being that way so mm. sometimes the people who you think are like always going to be in your corner maybe they can't relate to you anymore yeah. and uh, as you grow these different parts of yourself you have to kind of be okay with the fact that other parts are gonna yeah. inevitably fall away um which yeah i found quite difficult to begin with and not you know although it still does like play in my mind sometimes i'm just like i'm working towards something like so much bigger than myself mm. now like visions and the goals that I have are just like so much bigger than just me so you have to just 
overcome like the small hurdles with what you know is inevitably going to like pay off like ten tenfold, not just in the monetary sense. Yeah, and that's it can be difficult as well, like you said, because you might have to like cut people loose or just yeah. distance yourself or whatever. For sure, and I think it, it it doesn't even necessarily that you like on purposely do it. Sometimes you'll just like drift apart, or like people won't be able to relate to you anymore. Yeah, <laughs> I guess. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, is there any tool or apps that you use that really help with your productivity and working while you're in different different countries or different yes. environments, workspaces? Um, so meditation has been a huge one for me, and. Um, so I actually grew up Buddhist um, and I found it very challenging as like a young person going to a temple and trying to meditate mm. and kind of like calm your thoughts. So I just like as an adult, I was like, no, this won't work for me. This isn't my thing. And I came across this app called Insight Time. I was like, you know what? I'll give it a go for a week. And it has actually has a system inbuilt where you can see how many consecutive days you've done. I was like, oh, well, I might as well mm. keep going now that I've done a week. And now here we are 229 days later and I, it's just kind of become my morning routine. Like I need to do 10 minutes of meditation every morning. And if I don't do it in the morning, I kind of notice my day kind of slipping. Yeah, and yeah. I think on top of um, meditation, the biggest thing that you can do, even if you're like not working from home, you're not traveling, mm. just as a general like life thing, not checking your phone for like at least the first half an hour of the day because otherwise I feel like the rest of your day goes to shit. As soon as you check your phone, that's it. Like cortisol levels are spiked and you're already, you're reacting to the day as yeah, opposed yeah. to making a to-do list. You know what I mean? Yeah. And on, on your, what, what, what was the name of that again? Insight Timer? Yeah, Insight okay. Timer. Okay. I haven't heard of that one. I, I used uh, Headspace before, you know that oh, one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. similar. I it a while ago, but um, yeah, yeah it's- you need to you need to switch over and it's totally free as well is so, it free okay. yeah so it's Ooh. free and it has like thirty thousand meditations on there for free and then you can pay for like courses and things but i just do the free mm. meditations cool and check that out so anybody watching or listening insight timer for meditation um and then just i suppose for like structure in your day um mm-hmm. when you're working with different clients and on different content and projects and stuff yeah is there any specific tool like Trello or any organizational tool at school? Yeah. Or? Well, <laughs> I'm trying to get better with Asana. So I have um, an accountability partner, um, just kind of this girl that I met over Instagram. Yeah, yeah. And we have like, a meeting with each other like every week for an hour and we'll chat to each other. And we're like, yes, let's um, start up an Asana and we'll put our goals in here. Um, and I'm trying to get better with using it, but I'm not perfect. So I think... Yeah what kind of helps me is to have like, okay, this day I'm doing promotion this day. I'm doing client work this day. I'm mm. doing blog work because I am doing a couple of different things. So yeah. I feel like focusing on one element per day. Per day. Yeah. It's, good, it's a good approach. Yeah. 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 I, I struggle with that because the same, like your, your mind has to work in, you know, kind of analytically and structurally, yeah. and then you have to be creative as well. And, yeah. do all of the kind of the admin work and putting mm-hmm. the content together and so so sometimes it's a bit overwhelming and you're like yeah, Fuck, where, where do i where do i start this week or whatever i try um i try and do you know the pomodoro method oh yeah 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 where you do, do, you, like do you have one of the little no i just pomodoros. do oh i need i need to get one of those you know you can get them yeah. on amazon yeah 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 so can you turn it around yeah is it like a cube? You get a cube and it says times and then you... Have you heard of those? It's it's like that, yeah. Um, yeah oh, what's, what's this is an actual... It's a little red uh, Pomodoro. I, I heard oh, it on some, some other podcast right. before or something. But uh, yeah, yeah that, that's... that's I actually... I'm going to get one of those. I'm going to write that down. Yeah, I'm Pomodoro. This is matching. Yeah. <laughs> um, are there any like travel related resources that you you go to say if you're deciding on a new place or you want to get some insight or like is there anything that you kind of regularly watch or maybe a podcast or anything that you listen to or yeah well you know i typically as a blogger i like reading other blogs um so there's a couple that i really love hey Ciara, who's another kind of black solo traveler yeah. i love i love 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 her stuff and she's just finished um you know, like Airbnb experiences, mm. they now do Airbnb adventures. So she just finished right. 
80 days around the world at Airbnb doing all these incredible different things. Yeah. Uh, places that you've like never even heard of. And it was Class. just, the whole thing is so beautiful. You need to check out her Instagram. Like she's posted like little videos and mm. pictures from there. What's her name again? Hey Ciara. So hey, and then C-I-A-R-A. Um, and then the other blog that I love, Where Goes Rose. So she's an English travel blogger. Mm. And at the moment she's kind of slow traveling and digital nomading through um mexico but in the past she's done asia europe she's really been everywhere and she is is very budget friendly as well she's always like how can i like make this pound last (laughs) (laughs) um books then books Uh, you know i don't really have any travel specific books i do you know i'm doing um this year i'm reading 52 books so if you ask me at the end of the year i might have some Books, but I am. Um, I saw that on your Instagram. Um, yeah, so I'm doing it. Um, how do you break? Like, say, fifty-two books a year is quite a lot. Um, yeah. Like, how how do you say a book is three hundred pages? How do you break that down over the week? Or like, do you oh, kind of skim, scan, look at the content, mm-hmm. the speed reading oh. method, or? <laughs> I just read read. A, I didn't know there was methods. I'm just reading the book. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah. So. You know what? It was because I don't know. I don't know what made me want to get into it. No, I was like, wow, I really miss like reading. And I think especially when you're someone who writes creatively, like reading actual books is so important. And it's funny because after I read a book and then like I look at my phone afterwards and be like, wow, the words are so small on here and everything looks so weird. Um, so yeah, reading books is actually one of my friends who reads all my blog posts. After like my first month of reading books, she's like, wow, your writing has like already improved. Yeah. So. Yeah, um, but I find, like, I read quite quickly anyway. So it's on, what, the um, end of January now, and I've done six six books. Jeez, well right. done. That's, that's impressive. Yeah, that's really something that's good to good to do. And, um, yeah, like, it's, it'll definitely, I suppose, help your, your own writing and ideas. Yeah. And Yeah, I think it's really good for your brain as well. Because, you know, even if you're, like, maybe you're reading an article on your phone but you can easily get distracted or you're watching netflix but at the same time you're watching your phone with a book you can only look at the book so it generally is a really good stress release for me and i found since i'd like committed to doing this i'm like well i have to do 52 i've told everyone i'm going to do 52 now i've actually been watching a lot of netflix because i'm like between the books (laughs) yeah so it's all real books in the real world hard Um, hard paper (laughs) I've read five five real books, one fake book. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm I'm the same. I there's something about having the physical book that mm. I just prefer. Like I have a Kindle. I got it yeah. years ago. One of the first ones. Used it once. It's kind of a cool piece of tech, but yeah, um, I I just prefer. I love having the the, the, the real book. <laughs> yeah, I think you know what they smell good as well. They smell good. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Just going to the library is an adventure in itself. So if you don't have a library card, people get a library card. It's free, all the books you could want. And I went to the library and I was like, how many of these can I take out at once? And she said 50. She said I could take 50? out 50 books at once. Yes. Yeah. I mean, obviously crazy. I didn't, but I was like, that's yeah, yeah. so cool. I'll just have these five. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was actually there last week. I'm, I'm studying at the moment. Uh, I'm doing oh, tourism cool. marketing. So you have to do a, yeah, a dissertation. Really? So I had to get a load of books out. <laughs> I don't have that pain. Yeah, I will be done in three months. So, but I'm really only kind of starting it now. So I, I had to go down to the the town library here, and I thought you could only take out five books, and so I brought seven up to the counter, and I was kind of chancing my arm that they might give me the extra two, but they were like, "No, you can take twelve out." Um, I love that chance yeah. with the seven books. Yeah, okay, mate. I know I've got five, but do you mind the extra two? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on, man. <laughs> You mentioned before, um, just before the interview, Gabby Bernstein. Yes, yes. So I feel like, although I'm only just getting back into the fiction books at the moment, I Mm. do read a lot of personal development books. And one that I love is The Universe Has Your Back by Gabrielle Bernstein. And especially for me, who is someone who experiences a lot of anxiety, just the fact that, you know, you don't have to just like rely on yourself to make things happen, that this kind of, a bigger plan out there and I think mm. whether you believe in God whether you believe in spirituality or whatever you believe in you can read it despite like what your beliefs are 
because I think she does refer a lot to God in it, and I'm not Christian mm. myself, but I can yeah. still like relate towards it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. The universe has your back. Cool. The universe has your back. What would be your favorite app in general? Well, we have we have a love hate relationship, but I would say Instagram. Um, and okay, one for the pretty pictures, and I will look at stuff on there. And it inspires me to go somewhere. So I went to South Korea this year. And I think this whole trip stemmed from a picture I saw of um, a library there. And then just yeah. the way that books were stacked in this library was really beautiful. I was like, wow, that's cool. And then it ended up with a whole trip to South Korea. Um, but the other thing is making friends on Instagram. I found yeah. Instagram to be like one of the best social media tools for making friends. Yeah. Um, and especially when you have like existing communities. So maybe like podcasting for you or blogging for me or mm. specific interests when you're in within those groups and then you kind of find your people on Instagram and you just get chatting and then I've met up with yeah I've met up with quite a few people from Instagram actually best best business book recommendation oh without a doubt secrets of the millionaire mind by T Harv Ecker and you know it's always something that gets me that at school you really aren't taught enough about money Mm. And it's like probably one of the most important things you need to know in life. Um, but this book, it's like a really small, well, relatively small book. And it talks about how to manage your money, how to diversify your income streams. And then what I found the most interesting was that it kind of tells you that you're, the way that you are with money now is based on your beliefs um, of money growing up as a kid. So if you saw that you're parents made a lot of money but then there was like never left any left over mm. or you know if you were always broke you might then as an adult you like always spend your money to get back down to that point no matter how much you make because that's the base level that you're used to yeah, yeah. I, I, like my mind was blown when I read that and I think I've read it two times and I'm going to read it for a third time because there's just so much to get from it yeah. and there's little exercises you can do as well and it also talks about um the importance of donating some of your money to charity, which is mm. something that's quite important to me as well. Very good. Wait, what's yours? I need to know your, your business book recommendation. Ooh, I have lots. Um, I kind of, I tend to read two or three different books at a time. So I might do yeah, five, five or 10 pages um, in mm. two or three different books, maybe read yeah. a little bit in the morning and then before I go to bed. Um, kind of one of the, one of the original ones, um, Think and Grow Rich, you probably read that one yeah. as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's, I suppose that sounds a bit cliched, but no. it, it really is, really is a good book uh, for principles. And like it was written a long time ago and it, it still resonates yeah. with uh, like the mastermind principle and the principles are rules that I, I forget if they're called principles or rules in it. But um, yeah, that, that was a really good one. And that kind of opened up a few other ones then. Um, Another business book, um, Who Moved My Cheese? Did you ever read that one? It's a little small. No, but it sounds amazing already. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's just about kind of being open to change and adapting to basically it's about, I think it's about two mice that are searching for this cheese and they know yeah. that the cheese is always in the same place and then somebody mm. moves it. Um, wow. so, that, so they have to find it again. But it's a little short, tiny little book. Um, okay yeah I'm gonna need to read that Ooh, and it's a short book yes add to my pile <laughs> yeah I think it could be could be 100 pages maybe but it's a tiny shape like so you'd, you'd yeah. read it in a night like um, business book probably again this is one of the earlier ones but I kind of read it maybe a year or two after it came out um, mm -hmm. the four hour work week with Tim Ferriss oh yeah I thought about sitting at home I need to finish it yeah like like a lot of people who work for themselves and work online probably have those three books in their top yeah. their top 10 maybe but that's for a reason because like he he kind of opened up the whole idea and whole world of working for yourself and streamlining everything and kind of measuring stuff and figuring out how how to be productive with less time and all of that yeah that's um, so important yeah so and one of his other ones, actually, Tools of Titans. It's a, th okay. th that's a massive, massive oh, big... Uh, oh. I think he interviews like 100 different people from elite oh. sports stars to CEOs to from all different disciplines, yeah. um, people best in their field. 
and it's, mm-hmm. it's kind of well written so it kind of gives they give good insights and then like a summary and some tips and tricks or tools that these people use yeah. to to be better at whatever they're doing um yeah just <laughs> i could go on <laughs> i love that you know what i find though with the kind of more difficult book series so i would say something like maybe how to win friends and influence people obviously it was written a very long time ago and sometimes some of the language is a bit like challenging i find that i will just listen to them as an audiobook because mm. otherwise if i like try and sit and read through them and they're like really dry i find it quite hard i quite like the ones that are like, light-hearted and they chat yeah, like yeah. little jokes in there but with like yeah the older ones there is no joking there's no joking to be had. <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> On kind of the more spiritual side or motivation or whatever, um, the alchemist, Paolo Coelho. Oh, yeah, 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 I've read, read that one, one yeah. Yeah, I, I want to read that one again, actually. I, I read that maybe, yeah. it's probably seven or eight years ago now, but really, yeah. really good book. Um, I think I found it left behind at a hostel, actually. You know those left behind books. <laughs> well, best having a stock there. You've got your own library. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You'll be renting them out to your friends. Yeah, yeah. What's what's your favorite quote? Oh, um, the only real voyage of discovery consists not in seeking new landscapes, but in having new eyes. Uh, I think that was by Marcel Proust, and I kind of first stumbled across it when I was like, I think I was literally like fourteen or fifteen, and the first time I read that, I remember it was when you could have like quotes on your Facebook profile, and I put oh, it on my yeah, Facebook yeah. profile. Like, yeah, I love this. Um, but even I think it's even more important now as you're traveling and you're going to all these new places and it's like, remember that it's not just about what you're seeing, it's about shifting mm. your own perspectives and your own beliefs and what you're seeing. And I think especially when you go to places like developing countries and there may be things there that you don't agree with, like maybe the way that mm. animals are treated, for example, but you have to remember that you're looking at it from a place of privilege. So although these things aren't like what you agree with, you have to think about the life circumstances and the situation that someone else mm. has grown up in. And, you know, I always, you know, even though I've had like a series of shitty circumstances, I always like check my privilege. I always like never doubt how privileged I am to get to travel and mm. get to see all the different cultures. And yeah, yeah. yeah, like having an open mind and also be opening, uh, be open to listening to people who have a different point of view from you that was something else that I kind of learned from travel because I've met a lot of characters that was are people that I would not not like normally hang out with but it's important to kind of push yourself out of the echo chamber and challenge yourself that way I think and that's yeah. <laughs> long long with the story but that's why I like that quote that's what it reminds me very good and just on that like what, what was probably your your worst travel experience oh many <laughs> um uh um oh okay this isn't like the worst but it wasn't good (laughs) (laughs) um and that was when i did my farm work in australia and so you do a farm work to get your second year visa if you do three months on a farm they'll give you a visa for another year and i thought i'd lucked out because i got this recommendation from a mutual friend Mm. and it was this farm where kind of like towed along the lines of like what was acceptable to do for your farm work but because they had farm land you kind of got away with it and i I got fired after four days because she didn't like my vibe and mm. <laughs> I was like you don't like my vibe and I accidentally um reversed like a golf buggy into a bin and she was like yeah these things are kind of like incomprehensible can't forgive you for this I'm gonna have to let you go and then after that <laughs> I know I know um I think it's just like they just didn't like me let's let's just be honest they just didn't yeah. like me <laughs> and they were looking for any excuse <laughs> and then after that I went to work on another farm which was a banana farm in um tropical Queensland and that was a challenge like you're working in a shed you're not allowed to talk to each other um you have all these targets to hit and then they'll pit you against each other by displaying everyone's numbers for you all to see and you're kind of like trying to beat your colleagues who are also your friends so you don't have the possibility of being fired and just that whole like three months like outside of work amazing best time ever but, but while I was at work I was so so unbelievably stressed that whole time and I remember once I actually like went to the bathroom had it like a like mental breakdown cried in the toilet and then I was like oh my god my numbers are going to be going down got to get back out there Jeez. so yeah that was, that was that was not a great experience but I definitely learned a lot <laughs> and just on that like so how, how do you get through the tough times of tough times in life that maybe things aren't going your way or 
just having a real shit time like yeah uh a few things so definitely meditation is one um which is funny because sometimes now one of the other things i do obviously talking to friends and they'll be like have you meditated today i think you need to do like another meditation because they yeah. know how it i am now um meditation yoga talking to my friends and journaling is actually one that i was kind of surprised by and i think it's like the act of like physically writing with a pen and paper mm. because you literally like will just write out and then there'll be all this stuff that you're thinking these subconscious thoughts that you didn't even realize that you're having and just because you're writing and you can't edit yourself so if you're typing on the computer it's not the same because you can edit and you think about it before you're typing but actually writing down um yeah you just like you learn so much um so yeah definitely this this <laughs> um what's what's your big goal for the year for 2020 well you know what my main one right now is i have been working on an ebook um a solo travel ebook for the past nine months now she is my child um and yeah it's due to release in february so kind of my tunnel vision right now is just kind of getting that book out it goes off to be edited tomorrow actually um and yeah i'm just getting that out there cool. you think like Self-publishing your own ebook, it sounds romantic, but then when you're actually doing it, there's so many like cogs to it. There's so many Sorry, different yeah. aspects. It's, it's just so much, but I have learned a lot. I've been loving it and I just, yeah, I can't wait to share it. Pretty good. And so when you send it off to be edited, uh, mm -hmm. how, like what's the time frame that you're looking at to, before you get back or how does it work? Like? Um, so it's actually, again, someone else that I met through Instagram. Um, and I think she's going to take maybe like a week to edit it and she's yeah, going to yeah. do read and the copy edit. Um, but as she has another job, it's not like her main priority. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. yeah I've, before that stage though, I sent it off to 10 people. Some of them were my friends, some of them were strangers. Mm. I just asked them to like, read it. What do you think I need to change? Like, I want you to be like brutally honest. How are you yeah. finding this to get through? And then after that, I go back in and edit and then I send it away to her for like the final one. Are you going to have a print version maybe of? Uh, maybe one day, but yeah. for now, <laughs> I'm just, I'm just. Digital. Just, yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. For now, even one day, we'll see. Very good. Well done. You'll have to send me a copy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I will. Yeah. So where are you off to next then? I have nowhere confirmed, but. This is actually pretty normal for me. It's like, I'll kind yeah. of decide, like, I'll know, okay, this is the period of time I have to go somewhere. And then maybe a couple of months before something will inspire me or I'll just be like, okay, let's go from the list of places that I've not yet been to and let's just pick one. So I don't have anything locked in, but here's some things that I would like, like to do. Hmm. Um, Tasmania in Australia. Tasmania. I would love to go there and it would have to be like in the next couple of months because then it started getting cold and I don't like the cold. <laughs> um, I would love to do a Euro trip, especially as kind of this year's the last mm. year that we have like freedom of movement given Brexit and everything. Yeah, so yeah. want to want to make the most of that red passport while well, I've still got it. Yeah. Yeah. So, so yeah. Uh, Interrailing or something. Yeah. I would love to do something like that because yeah. that was, I was the first ever trip that I was kind of meant to go on and then my friend pulled out and then I moved to the other side of the world. So now I'm like, I kind of feel like it's something you do when you're like a youth, you know? <laughs> so I'm like, I'm getting older, so I need to get this done. Yeah, but saying that, some, someone in my class in college, um, she's like 35 or 40 and she's she's doing an interrailing trip uh, this this summer, so never too Amazing. old <laughs> yeah true true i feel like it's just one of those trips that i want to do kind of like and especially before you know like the further into my business and stuff i get yeah like yeah, the yeah. last time i'm going to be able to step back from it so yeah. i feel like now now is the time yeah well, it will be hard working on the go mm -hmm. when doing a trip like that because it's a lot of yeah so i feel like it would have to be like i would need to take a bit of time out yeah yeah two or, two or three weeks um, yeah very good. So I suppose before we wrap it up, how, how can people reach out to you, get in touch um, and maybe buy, buy the book or avail of your Pinterest services? Well, so, so, so many different details everywhere apart from, everywhere apart from Instagram. 
I'm Effie Talks Life. So that's E F F Y Talks Life. Um, and then on Instagram, just to be different, just because I thought I was being cool four years ago, it's Effie Shows Life. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah. And then, although the ebook isn't out yet, you can sign up to my mailing list. And on my mailing list, I have a free solo travel bucket list. Um, so I'll give you the link for that. And maybe you can put it in like the show yeah, notes. Yeah, brilliant. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that's a little solo travel bucket list I made because I spent a lot of time on Pinterest and I noticed although there's all these bucket lists, none of them were specifically for solo travelers. So I was like, cool. I'll make it for you guys. Don't worry. I'll, I'll be the, people, the savior we need right now. So yeah. Brilliant. Effie, it's been a, it's been my privilege having you on the bootcast. So thanks a million for coming on. Best of luck with all of your travels and all of your ventures and your ebook. And, um, Hopefully we'll we'll meet someday and yeah, best of luck. Yes. Thank you. You too.